there are a handful of incredibly useful plugins to expand what you can do with Advanced Custom Fields and Elementor Pro. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Advanced Post Queries. Now, this little gem allows you to quickly apply pretty powerful filters to your content. The best aspect, though, is that you're not limited to just one filter. You can easily stack multiple filters or queries to create some pretty comprehensive content filtering. And today, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the interface and take you through a couple of examples using both native WordPress features as well as some examples using ACF custom fields. Now, if you're ready to get a lot more creative with your WordPress and Elementor Pro websites, let's get started. Let's start off with a super simple but pretty relevant example, something where you want to include posts by the same author. So for example, this is an architectural business site that I created for a tutorial before. Uh, as you can see, it's a nice, clean, simple site. And if you'd like to find out how to build this, something very, very similar, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check out the tutorial on this if you're interested. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to the project section. Now, the project section is simple filters, so you can filter through. But what I've done is I've set this up now. So when you click on a particular architect, a project by a specific architect, so we'll click and open that up. We scroll down, we'll see at the bottom, we've got related projects by that same architect. So you can see with this example, I've got two under this particular architect. If we come up and choose a different one, we'll take this Hope Park, for example. If we scroll down, you can see I've got more examples by this particular architect. Now this is just associated with the author of this particular post. So it's a very simple example, but like I say, it's one of those things that a lot of people would want to do. So how do we do it? Well, let's just go to the dashboard of WordPress and I'll show you exactly how to do all this right now. Now for this specific example, I'm using a template that's part of Elementor Pro's theme builder, something I've created. So if we take a look at the single, which is for the single post types, you can see I've got a default portfolio single. So I'm going to edit that with Elementor. Once that opens up Elementor, we can take a look now at adding everything in. Now, everything is set up. This is just going to display that specific project as part of the portfolio. If we come down to the bottom, though, this is the area that I want to drop in this new related section. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the posts option. So we're going to grab the posts option. We're going to drag and drop that underneath our title, and that will pull in the basic information that it thinks is correct. Now, what this is doing is it's simply pulling in all of the posts. If you're using custom post types, you could change the category where this is coming from to your custom post type, but this is just using standard WordPress posts. Nothing special about them. What we need to do, though, is first of all, configure this a little bit. So we're going to change the post per page. We're going to set that to three because we don't want to have too many on there. And I'll quickly change the image size so it looks a little bit better. Then we're going to come down and we're going to remove the comments and the date. If we put the author on, that'll be useful because it allows us to see which author is coming up on there. And if we take a look at what we can see at the moment, you can see we've got two by Paul C and one by Billy Bob. Now, obviously, we want to filter this out based upon the actual author or the architect for this specific example. At the moment, it's just displaying everything. So you'd think you'll come down to query. And inside there, you could use the standard query options for include and exclude. And we can, if we want to, choose author. But there's only one simple way of filtering that. We can choose an author. We can't go in and fine tune and base it upon the author of this specific post. So we have no way of filtering that data. So let's just get rid of that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down underneath and you can see we've got the advanced query options. And this is basically all you're going to see when you add the plugin in. It's gonna add this extra advanced query options to your query section throughout WordPress and Elementor Pro. So what we can do is we can click on there and we have currently five different options. What we're going to do is we're going to choose dynamic user. So we're going to click on that and you can see that now opens an option up underneath that allows us to choose how we want to find this dynamic user. Now it's worth bearing in mind before we move on, these advanced query options are stackable. We don't have to have just one. We can click and we can add another one in and a third one whatever you kind of want to do. So you can stack these on top of each other, which makes it insanely powerful and very simple to work with. So by doing that, you can very quickly build up quite complex queries, but very easy to build up. So we've seen how we can do that. Let's take a look now at how we dynamically filter this. So you can see we've got a new box underneath for dynamic user. We're gonna click and we can choose from four options in this case. In this example, we're gonna choose post author is current post archive author. Because it's the template for a single post, 
there's going to be one author associated with it. This will then show the posts, related posts for that specific author. Hope that makes sense. So we're going to choose that option and you'll see now we only see the Billy Bob ones and that's because the example one we're looking at is a project by that specific author kind of thing. Okay, so once we've done that, we've pretty much done what we wanted to do. But before we move on, let's take a little look at what we have inside this dynamic user options again. You can see the first two are pretty self-explanatory. The post author is the current user. This is incredibly useful if you are filtering things based upon you being the sort of logged in user. So you could have a list of all of your posts and you'll see only your posts in, for example, a custom dashboard. Now I've used this in the custom front end dashboard video that I did a little while back. If you wanna check that out, I'll drop a link to that one in the description below as well so you can take a look at how I use that and how useful it is. We've also got things like custom field is current user, custom field contains current user. If you're using something like advanced custom fields, and you have custom fields to do with user information, then you can grab that info and you can use that to filter out data as well. So if we chose that, for example, you'll see that will open up now extra fields specific to filtering based upon that information. This is something that I think is incredibly useful. And like I say, when you tie this into something like advanced custom fields, it does open up a ton of very useful options. Things that in my opinion should be in built into Elementor Pro. There's a lot of different third-party plugins like this that do a simple job. And if you ask me, a lot of these options should be built into the core Elementor Pro. They're vital, fundamental tools. Anyway, that's my little moan over the way. Let's put it back to the right option and we'll hit update. And that then should complete the whole setup. So let's just take a look at that in action now, make sure that everything is working as we expect it to. So we're back onto our projects page. Let's click on this first option, which is Hope Park, which I know is one that's done by myself, Paul C. So if we scroll down, we'll see we've got three related posts, three related projects by me, Paul C. Let's come back out of that and go to one that I know that Billy Bob did. And we'll click to open up City Park. And if we scroll down, we'll now see that Billy Bob's listed architectural projects are there. So it's a really simple example of how you could use this, but I think it kind of shows you the power of this very simple and absolutely free plugin when you combine it with dealing with dynamic data and linking things through to authors and so on. It's very useful. Let's take a look at a separate example now. I've created a blank page called My Projects. We're going to open this up in Elementor. So we're going to edit that with Elementor. Once that opens up, we're going to create a new listing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down like we did before, we're gonna come down to the post option, drag that onto the page, and just quickly fine tune that. So we're gonna just say we want the image just to be better quality. And we'll remove the comments and we'll just drop in the author. So we can see now we've got just basically a listing of all of the different projects. Let's come back down to our query again. And from there, we're gonna just come into the advanced query option. We're going to come in and we're going to choose a dynamic user again, but we're going to set this up slightly differently this time because this isn't a single post on archive. We simply want it to be the logged in user. What we're going to do is we're going to just choose the post author is current user. So obviously if you were logged in and you didn't have any posts in this case projects associated with you, this would just be blank. So that's the first part of it. We're now going to stack a second query on top. So just to show you how this works. Now inside advanced custom fields for the meta field information to do with these specific posts, I've got a field in there, the simply date of completion. It just specifies the year that this particular project was completed and it's just a normal select field. So you'll just have a normal drop down selection field. So what we need to do is come into this and we're going to say custom field value. From there, we now have another option that allows us to stack on top of what we currently have. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and you can see we have a range of different options. We just want to choose the custom field is a specific value. So we're going to click on that. It says, right, okay, well, what's the field name, which we know is going to be completion. So I'm just going to type that in. So that's the name of my custom meta field for this. And now what I need to do is just put in the value inside there. Now I've just set up values from 2018 to 2021, just to say when these projects were completed. So let's start off with 2019. And you can see now what happens is it's filtering based upon me being the currently logged in user, Paul C, and the projects that were completed in 2019. If I change that to something like 2020, we'll see we have different projects. These were completed this year. If I go back and set that to 2018, 
you can see we've got one project. And if I set this to 2021, obviously there'll be no results returned. So we could put in a little message inside there saying, unfortunately, there are no projects during this date. So let's just set that back to 2019 and we'll hit update on there. So we've now created a stacked query. We have dynamic user and we have a custom field value. So if we come back over now into my projects and we're just going to refresh this page and there's our my projects page. So you can see now it's been filtered out to show only the one that's relevant to 2018, 2019, 2020, whatever we set up as the filter. So let's take a look now as Billy Bob and we'll see we have different values inside there. So logged in as Billy Bob, as you can see from the top right hand corner, I'm going to come to my projects and you can see that same filter is set up in there, but because I'm logged in as a different user, as Billy Bob, I'm seeing my projects from that specified year. So it's very easy to stack these on top of each other and build these more comprehensive, complex filters or queries to be able to display data in almost any kind of way that you would want. So that's a couple of really simple examples. Let me just quickly show you some of the options we have available for some of the more advanced query options. So let's open this up. We've seen dynamic user and we've seen custom field value. Let's take a look at something like the date and time, for example. We can click and from there we can choose the date and time option. So we can specify a custom field is a start date. So this is where you primarily probably want to link this through to something like advanced custom fields, something like that. And then what you can do is you can say custom field to start, and then you can drop in the start. So you could put values to be a start date and an end date, and they have to kind of fit inside those ranges. You know, you can filter this out in lots of different ways. So you can say query by the time, you can say you want to include today. So that's the dynamic date and time options. So we get rid of those. You can see we've got dynamic related posts. And from there, we can choose the options. So you can say post is amongst related posts. Post has related terms. So you may have a specific set of terms that are part of a post. And then you want to list other posts that are related to that. So you could have one that was to do with architecture. You could have one to do with something completely different. And you want to group all the architectural posts together. You could use that related terms option. And again, you can see you've got custom field data information we can link through to as well. So custom field is current post ID and so on and so forth. So it's heavily integrated into not only the normal core WordPress functions, but also if you have dynamic custom fields using ACF or ACF Pro, you can tap into those as well. Now, this is a great way of working. And what I would highly recommend you do is combine this to the dynamic conditions or dynamic visibility for Elementor plugins, because they will then give you the ability to filter data using this particular plugin and then control the visibility and dynamic conditions. If no values are returned, all those kinds of good things. And the beautiful thing about this is all three of those plugins are absolutely free. And you could combine those with a tool like advanced custom fields and really open up incredibly complex and comprehensive ways of filtering your data, viewing your data, outputting your data, and dealing with conditional logic as well. So there's really no excuse to not having these in your toolbox to open up a ton more opportunities and options as part of working with not only WordPress and Elementor and Elementor Pro, but also, like I say, advanced custom fields and those kinds of custom data creation tools. So now that you've seen a couple of examples, could you see yourself using advanced post queries for Elementor in your toolbox? As always, let me know in the comment section below. And if you'd like to see the other tools that I'd recommend, I'll drop some links in the description so you can check those out and pair those up with advanced post queries. You'll have a pretty powerful set of tools there for absolutely no cost. Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.